Hey, Yetta, the grandkids are getting older. Should we start giving money for RESPs? After this episode, you might shift your perspective, even if you're thinking yes right now. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team. I'm Yetta Decker. And I'm Ken Decker. And we're excited to welcome you to another episode of Life's Inside Track, where we share techniques, thoughts, tips, and tools that we all deserve. You, I, everyone, so we get to turn our house into home, our families thrive, and we live the best life possible. In this segment, we're going to consider is what's the best way to save for our kids or our grandkids for their post-secondary education? Is it, in fact, RESPs or is there a different solution? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, there is a, a tendency now that people are coming out of formal education with a lot of debt and aren't necessarily finding great jobs in their field. Mm. And that debt can really slow you down over, you know, the first years when you're when you're trying to get your your job income up. You're looking at maybe buying your first home. You maybe you're starting a family or a relationship, and you have the weight of this debt. Right. So we're talking about how to get ahead of that, so right. you don't have the debt with. Potentially RESPs, but I think mm -hmm. you have another idea. Even though we did it, we'll confess right now. We did it the way we wouldn't actually propose to do it. So this is one of those times where we did the best we knew how to do when we did it. Yeah. And in hindsight, we would do differently if we knew then what we know yeah. now and it was with good. our kids. It was good at the time, and maybe it was even the best at the time because – if you don't have the equity to be able to buy a rental property, because that's what we're going to discuss is the difference between an RESP and buying a rental property for your kid's university yeah. education, um, sometimes you're just not in a position to do that. And so let's explain about the RESP at first, because you might be saying, what the heck is an RESP? I've heard of RRSPs, which is a Registered Retirement Savings Plan. Well, an RESP is a registered education savings plan, and it has some advantages and it has some caveats that Li make it a can little bit- Can we call bit it limitations? Limitations, sure. Mm. Um, so first of all, you can put in up to 50000 per child into an RESP. Which today wouldn't be enough for an education anyway. No, but the idea is you start young, let yeah. time do the heavy lifting, and you will build up income on it, right? Yeah. So the beauty with an RESP is it is a tax deferral system. In other words, if you put money into the RESP, your, your overall income goes down, which means you're paying less taxes. Okay. Secondly, the government has a program where they're going to add, if you put in $2,500, they are going to add $500. So they're going to add 20% on your first $2,500. After that, there's no incentive, but you can put in more. If you want, you get more tax deferral and you get that money to grow in whatever investment. You can invest in anything you can put an R R S P into. Right. And let's just talk about tax deferral for a minute, because I know when we were in our 20s and even our early 30s, we didn't necessarily understand the implication as it's associated with tax deferral, because people would use the word tax savings. It's a tax savings. It's a tax savings. And sure, it's a tax savings today, mm -hmm. but it's really deferring the tax and the money does grow without um taxes on the increase while it's growing. Yes, because it's in that uh, it's under that umbrella of a registered system. So the income grows tax exempt until you remove the money. Like an RSP, when you remove all the money, you pay the tax. Now the advantage of an RESP is the person going to school gets to remove it out of the system and pay the tax on it at their tax rate. And because they're in school and working part-time, maybe their tax rate is going to be very minimal. And thus, you're, you're basically moving from a higher tax bracket to none or low tax bracket. Right. So in the case of an RESP, different than RRSP, because an RRSP, the retired 
savings plan. It is actually a registered retirement savings plan. Mm -hmm. It is taken out by the same person that put it in. Right. So therefore, unless your income has gone down dramatically, you may be at the same tax rate mm -hmm. as you were when you put it, put in, it in versus the RE. ESP, the probability is the person that's taking it out is at a no or very low tax rate, exactly. different than the person that put it in. Exactly. This is a cool thing to, to focus on and to be aware yeah. of. Now, the, the other caveat is you can pool. So if you have two, three children, you pool, you open the RESP and that money kind of pools for the two or three of them, which is nice because I've heard of cases where somebody has one child, they put the money in, that child decides not to go to furthering education after secondary school. And now the parent needs to pull that money out. And when they pull it out, the government will claw back the bonus money, that $500 on the first $2,500 per year. They'll claw that back. Um, and then you'll add all that money onto your taxable rate. So that might put you into an even higher tax bracket, which is going to cause more pain. Right. And I just want to highlight what Ken said is $2,500 per year with a maximum of $500 from the government to the account per year. Earlier, we per, didn't- Per year and per person. Right. Per year, per person, because I think that's an important piece to sort of be aware well, of. Per it's child, not, just, not per person, but per child. Yeah. Yep. So it's not just $500 said and done. It If it's for 10 years that you're doing it, it's $5,000 mm -hmm. per child. If you're doing it for 20 years, which yep. you could almost get that in if you started it when they were infants, mm -hmm. that is 10 what I say, ten thousand yeah. dollars, and, and you get to keep the gifted. growth on it, though. Right, and you, right, you get to keep the growth either way. You just mm -hmm. have, would have to give back that portion. Right, and now with our kids, I know Ryan went. And we used some of it for him. Candace didn't go into post secondary school, and so I pulled the money out. She thought she should get the money, and maybe you want to gift it to your kids in hindsight for a down payment on a house or something. That's. That's totally up to you. Personally, I bought a sports car, right, when we took the money out. <laughs> and she got the pleasure of riding it, whatever. And when she did do her further education to become a realtor and to do what was required there, she didn't mm -hmm. pay for it. We did. Right. So the reality is there is post-secondary education. It just wasn't the formal and it wasn't right after mm -hmm. high school, mm -hmm. right? So right. That's the interesting piece. What types of education, that's something we want to think about, what types of education is considered post-secondary that is actually qualifies with your RESP yeah. money? Yeah, for sure. And you know, it's it's important that I think if you if you want to be connected in our community and learn about things like this and, and just be a little bit more knowledgeable or open up questions then connect with us at together at deckerteam.com. That would be mm -hmm. awesome. And we're going to talk also uh, in, in the next segment about how housing, buying a rental mm -hmm. property may actually be a better choice for you to fund uh, your children's education, their education. Right, because you can draw, I mean, we'll give a, we'll be a spoiler alert. Yeah. You can draw equity even if you don't sell the property. So you don't have to think about it has to be gone, right? Yeah, exactly. So what are your plans for your children's and your grandchildren's to help them move to have a great start? And we're delighted that we can help position you to build wealth wisely because it's it's about way more than just money. Moving forward with the Decker team. Moving forward together with the Decker team.